okay perfect now we can have the recording available in case that you want to uh, see it again or just share with someone else uh, this first class of 2024 is called winter green thumbs Cult cultivating cold weather gardens in new york state i am christian acosta agriculture educator from corner cooperative Ex cooperative extension allegheny county and well let's start with this first class of this year so we are going to be uh, learning <clears throat> about why to be uh, gardening during the winter in New York State, understanding our climate, uh, selecting the right plants, uh, the essential gardening techniques for this um, this uh, winter uh, garden, <clears throat> planting your your plants in cold weather, and some maintenance and some tips. Uh, to keep a garden successful and even have a green thumb uh, during the winter. So first, when we talk about, uh, oh, well, uh, before just starting uh, about questions, if you have questions, feel free to uh, leave the questions in the chat so I can see the chat. Uh, and yeah, when we have the space for questions, uh, also feel free to unmute your microphone. And if you have the microphone active right now, so uh, please mute your microphone um, so we can uh, keep going with the with the class. And that's it. So let, uh, now let's start. So why to start gardening during the winter? So why just not to wait until spring and just the regular, the normal, not normal, but the regular gardening season? So well, when you have that passion that there is the the spirit of the gardener and that passion of being growing uh, our own plants, our own uh, herbs, uh, vegetables, flowers, um, all year round, right? Especially when you're pro producing your own food, so it's different. And probably, well, I cannot explain exactly how, but probably a doctor or some uh, in the medical science can explain like why it's that we actually we feel better when we are um, getting the nutrients from our own salads, our own lettuce, our own um, products that we are growing. But also. Uh, because of course we don't apply a lot of pesticides, a lot of mm, chemicals that normally they they apply to keep the crops growing and protect them from the pest diseases, etc. So this is why uh, the, it's that spirit that yeah I want to keep growing something, and because the the weather right now is dark, it's cold, and it's nice to see something green growing around and some life around uh, so that's that's nice but we have some challenges right so the number one is of course temperature so cold temperatures we have snow uh, sometimes a lot of snow uh, we don't have a lot of sunlight and just short uh, daylights and the soil also uh, it freezes so a frozen frozen soil and we have also another challenge that is with the wind really cold wind so because of this uh, yeah it's like almost impossible to be growing uh, anything during the winter but it's almost but not it's not impossible so this is why we are learning today about growing something that we're going to see like what what is that something uh, during the winter so we have these opportunities to be growing some cold hardy ones hardy plants and using methods like greenhouse uh, gardening even if it's not the huge greenhouse a fancy one and um, just in a budget having a greenhouse uh, mulching uh, planning our garden for the spring and there are so, there are a couple um, options that you have to be growing a uh, also uh, food growing some food um, during the winter okay so the first step before starting so it's really important because it's not only for me telling you uh, okay go and plant this so we need uh, to understand before choosing the plants and before starting our seeds and our plants is understanding our area our climate why is this important? Of course, because each um, plant, they have some requirements, even the hardy ones. 
So for here for New York State, we have a weather with cold winters. So we can see there there are some some research that you can see probably like this this uh, image here. This is just the Copen climate ty types of New York. So this is just a general uh, information that we have. And here you see that for our areas, so in Allegheny County, we have a, a warm summer humid continental. So what is that about? So well, it's just uh, data that we have here that we can see that this just, uh, in general, we can tell it's just that it's different than, for example, these areas uh, uh, more like to the north or to the south. For example, in New York City, even when we are in the same state, it's different to be planting something in there than here in Allegheny County. So, okay, and this is only just the general uh, the general knowledge that you can check in a forecast or just year by year you can see the in the records. Uh, but also we have some. Um, some challenges and is the microclimates. So we have microclimates and you can see that even it, it doesn't matter if you're just starting in the gardening, you can see that uh, probably you have some microclimates at some point. So for example, just here, if you're driving uh, through Belmont and Alfred, and sometimes you see that it's pouring or it's a lot of like heavy snow falling and then five minutes keep driving for three five minutes and then there is nothing or just a couple inches of snow and not really that heavy weather so that is a microclimate and it's when it's different it can be colder or warmer than the just than the general forecast so when you take your phone or the forecast in the tv for example and you compare with your property and you can see that yeah it's different than that it's colder or i have more snow for example the house on top of the hill so the wind can be way different than the houses uh, down the hill also for uh, the properties the houses that uh, we have water especially like big lakes like great lakes around um, for these properties you can have the lake effects lake effect snow so if this is the first time that you hear that effect is just simply that the water is warmer than uh, even when it's cold but it's still warmer than the cold wind so the the temperature above the water so of course that uh, the water evaporates and then a uh, small cloud that gets bigger and bigger and bigger and because heavy uh, wind just keep taking all those uh, all those uh, clouds to the urban areas or just the areas around the lakes and then a lot of snow that is what we are seeing in in different areas right so that is a challenge and that heavy snow of course even when the plants they are hardy ones and they can uh, survive and i'm going to show you which ones they they are hardy ones uh, for here for the for New York State and that they are adapted to the area but still they can suffer and this is why we need to understand first uh, our our place in our property where you're going to plant your garden uh, go taking the the notes just to know if you have a microclimate that it can be colder or warmer if there is a, um, like some wind breaks for example there are some trees and or a fence or different shrubs around that they can help with that or if it's just open and you you are going to have that challenge with the wind like a really cold wind because this can desiccate and it helps uh, contributes to the desiccation of the plant so yeah they are going to suffer and this is one of the reasons why sometimes we have plants that we know that they survive the, the winter, that they are hardy ones, but when the spring comes, the plant is not coming back to life, it's not surviving, and it just dies. <laughs> so you, you learn about the, the place, so about your place, about the temperature, the minimum temperatures that you have just an average year by year and the max temperatures right also if this is the first time that you see something like this or if you're experienced or you're more familiar with this map 
is the plant hardiness zone map. You can find this one online in the USDA website. And here I'm showing you the one for New York State, but you can find like in general for the, for the US or by uh, different states. So you can see that we, yeah, we are in New York State, but you, we have way different um, zones. So it's not the same planting, um, for example, a couple of vegetables here in Essex, Franklin, Clinton, than here in Allegheny County. So for Allegheny County, we have the zone is between 5B and 6A. So what uh, does it mean? So it's just the hardiness zone and about temperature, the minimum temperatures, because we are talking about winter, right? It means that we have the lowest, like between negative five degrees Fahrenheit and negative 15. So it doesn't go like, for example, up here, Franklin, that can be negative 30 degrees. And that is that can be a huge difference between a, selecting and growing some plants even during the winter and being successful about that or just not not having any success but it doesn't mean that it's your fault in this case if you pick if you place a plant that is not going to do well in here for example for the hardiness zone for a uh, it's not your fault it's not that you have a black thumb because it, it's typical that we feel like that frustration and oh I, I'm not good for that. So no, it's just, <clears throat> sometimes it's just not the right plant in the right place. It's not about you. So to make it a little bit easier, because usually we have to take them up and then start Googling or reading literature research about plants that they are better for these areas. So for Allegheny County, I, I put this information here about perennials, vegetables, uh, shrubs, herbs, and trees that you can be growing here in Allegheny County in general. This, we are talking about the hardiness zone. So the hardiness zones for Allegheny County, you can be growing these plants. It doesn't matter like what, um, we are not talking about specifically winter ones yet. So just in general. So we, because for example, tomatoes, we cannot be growing tomatoes uh, during the winter unless it's indoors so it's different but uh, during the season the growing season yeah definitely we can be growing these plants same for the other ones so feel free if you want just to take a, a picture <laughs> sorry or a screenshot of this uh, this slide these uh, are the plants that they are reported so probably there are more but uh, from the literature literature uh, research uh, reports these are the ones that it's proven that you can easily start with these plants here in New York State, specifically Allegheny County. <clears throat> okay, if you uh, want to check uh, this one again, uh, like I said, this is <clears throat> being recorded, so you can check the, the recording later in our YouTube channel. Um, or just ask at any time, you can uh, send me an email and we are happy to help and send you, sending you this information uh, about these plants. Okay, so we have an idea about what plants uh, they do well here in the in New York State, in this county with this hardiness zone. So before just selecting that one, uh, we need to, okay. I know that these plants are like uh, I can choose a couple of these ones, but before that. Uh, we need to check about a couple things like the frost tolerance. So here's when I said that there are a couple of plants, for example, I have sage and okay, I know that sage, it can, it, it can tolerate and resist uh, the winter. Uh, so yeah, it's frost tolerant. <clears throat> but even for sage, for lettuce, for a couple of vegetables that they, they still grow a little bit, uh, during the winter that we can still keep growing during the winter it doesn't mean that they are immortal and that they that it doesn't matter what temperature they are going to survive so this is the reason why probably you have a sage sage is really hardy one because it can tolerate the temperatures that uh, goes to 15 degrees fahrenheit and still keep alive 
But if, for example, there is a storm or a really cold, the, uh, the wind is too cold. So we have something in the forecast that you see that, okay, it probably is 20 degrees, but it feels like nine. So it's because of the wind is too cold. So at some point, yeah, it's 20 degrees, but then, yeah, uh, you can, you're like, I'm shocked or I'm impressed that my my sage died even when the temperatures always were between 20, 30. It wasn't that cold this winter. So it's because of this. So if the temperature goes below the minimum temperature for that plant, the plant is going to die, even if it's a hard, um, hardy one. So just take that in mind. Um, because we're going to see which one, which plants we can be growing during the winter, but uh, take the time to read and to know for each one of these ones, what is the minimum temperature uh, for your area? So if you know that you have a microclimate, uh, you know what plants you can be selecting. Also the, the varieties. So there are some varieties that of course, if you want a uh, lettuce from Texas, from Florida, California. Yeah, it's a lettuce and it's still the same lettuce uh, just by eye, right? It's just lettuce, but the variety is way different. Uh, the lettuce that we can be growing during the winter in New York state versus the, the one that they are growing in, in Canada, even colder areas or in California or in Texas or just more tropical areas. <clears throat> so how you know about this one? When you buy the seeds or when you get the seedlings and the catalogs, you see the varieties. Also, you can be using uh, cold frames in greenhouses. So we're not talking about like fancy greenhouses, like I mentioned before, just there are some small ones and still big enough to have some um, pots, for example, in pots, uh, or just to cover a small piece of um, a small area. And they are not that expensive. They are less than $100. There are some that they are even less than $50. And online, you can get uh, some of these ones. So, of course, we have all the prices. The fancy ones that above $200 or more or on a budget, and they are still good for, for the purpose. Or you can build your own one. So this helps to create like a greenhouse effect, even when it's not going to be... a uh, too hot or too warm, but it's going to keep the temperature in there just higher than the temperature outside. And this is common, probably you have seen, or you have, if you're an experienced gardener, you have done something like this, or someone in your family. Uh, this is why it's better to, to have uh, some protection, especially if it's really cold. For example, we have this about this fact about lettuce, it's the ideal temperature. They, it grows happy and keeps growing a lot between 55 degrees to 66 degrees Fahrenheit. But if it's lower than that, the plant is just keep growing, but it's slow, very slow, but still it's going to be alive and still it's possible to grow that one. Of course, if you have the plant indoors, so the temperature is going to be between 55, 66 uh, or a little more. So of course you can put it close to the window, even if it's cold in the window, uh, that's not going to kill the plant or uh, affect the lettuce or the urugula, that they are easy ones to be growing close to the windows. Okay, so not only uh, about this one, if you have questions at some point, even after these classes, uh, you always can uh, come and ask the local expert ex expertise, like the master gardener groups and cooperative extension offices. And that's why we also offer these classes for free and we are always happy to help. So, <clears throat> okay, we, we are talking about uh, first to study your area, to know your local climate and then just choosing some plants. So I'm going to show you next about which ones you can be growing for this area during the winter. But even out of the winter, I already showed you the options for Allegheny County. Uh, now, how to prepare, how to get ready for the cold, um, cold weather garden. So we have the essential cold weather techniques. 
So the number one is soil preparation. So these you can start just in the beginning of the winter or even there are some plants that you can start at the end of the summer. So uh, August, September, you can start preparing this soil because at some point, of course, like uh, when it's too cold, like in the middle of the winter in February, it's going to be frozen. So it's not going to be easy just to go and try to, to work and prepare the soil, right? <clears throat> so this, before that happens, before the, the, before it happens, so it's good to, to get ready. Uh, okay, one second. I'm going to show, okay, I'm going to answer the question in the chat in a little bit. Okay, so before, when we are getting ready, soil preparation, uh, when it's not frozen, and you can start adding organic matter, so the, e something easy if you want to start composting because it also is going to be cheaper so it's with compost if not you you can buy the fertilizer from from the stores and you can provide that uh, those nutrients to the soil so this is why even you can see the master gardeners around always uh, doing running the ph soil ph uh, clinics every year during the fall and they are always uh, uh, doing that recommendation about please uh, do do your soil testing and your pH testing uh, during the fall because we we know like okay my soil probably needs more organic matter it needs uh, nitrogen potassium calcium uh, different nutrients uh, or it doesn't need anything so that's nice to know that's nice because you are saving money in the process so do all your testing during the fall and if you don't know exactly like how to take the samples and any of these we always can help you can uh, call or send an email and we are happy to help with the group of master gardeners too so when we do something like this preparing the soil uh, we provide nutrients and we allow the soil to start working doing their work all the mi microorganisms working in there and changing that um, the nutrients and, and keeping those nutrients available for the plants during the cold uh, season if you are growing during the cold season or getting ready for the spring and if you have rice beds so this is like okay it's nice because they can warm up quickly in the spring but the challenge during the winter is that in the same way they can get really cold uh, because it's not the same like this just the soil it takes a long time to freeze right to get the really low temperatures and when we have just pots or something above the soil uh, of course the temperature it's going to affect that area that soil uh, faster so it's like something that can be positive and negative sometimes uh, in that case, we can you can be working with protecting the um, the rice beds uh, with some uh, sometimes plastics or just a wind so any wind break. So it's mostly about the wind, the temperatures, uh, and that that's that's like the concern about rice beds. But they are also good, and you this is one of the options if you want to keep doing it in rice beds. Like I mentioned about soil testing, because we want to know about the proper pH, so we can do the amend amendments for the soil during the all the cold season and get ready for the spring. In the soil preparation, of course, the essential is about the structure to have some loosened soil for the, the plants, because they are not happily growing like in the gardening season. Um, so they need some help right so at least if we can provide that um, loose soil uh, the roots are going to they don't need to, uh, to spend a lot of nutrients and energy in trying to break the the soil and try to get some nutrients from there another technique is um, okay we're good another technique is uh, mulching so mulching it also helps because it keeps some like a, a protection uh, for the wind, also for these 
period like we are we are like in this uh, time of the year where we have snow and then we have some high temperatures above 32 degrees and then we have that uh, that cycle the change is constantly changing between freezing and thawing freezing and thawing so that uh, the soil suffers the plants suffer uh, so with mulching, we help the soil, we protect the soil uh, from this, from these cycles of freezing and, and thawing. And also we can protect our, our plants if it's, for example, a rice bed, putting some fabric or plastic around the plants. So in that way, also we can help protecting the soil and keeping a little bit um, it's not uh, too hot or too warm, but still protecting the temperature in the soil, like keeping a little bit warmer than the temperature above, um, and also keeping the moisture. And we have some ex oh, sorry about some examples here. So this is something that you can be doing doing it, and it's just covering the plants also with some greenhouses or high tunnels, it can be high, like the high tunnels, or simple like this, just small like uh, these tunnels, but only for our vegetables or something that we can be growing in there. Uh, also using the clutches or the bell jars. So these ones are in, in glass, so they can be pricey, right? But now you can also, um, stores online you can get the plastic ones and when it's you know that it's going to be like too cold is even you're growing lettuce an example and they do well until 20 deg degrees so they can survive 20 degrees like the minimum but it's going to be nine or negative temperatures so there are some techniques that i'm going to mention next and uh, uh, because of the wind you can put one of these uh, jars uh, or just with the water, with the water gallons, uh, you can use anything to protect the the plant. Something that w uh, works as a windbreak. <clears throat> so if you know that it's going to be too cold, and uh, my plant, for example, my sage that I have in the garden right now, uh, it survives with fifteen degrees Fahrenheit. Degrees Fahrenheit and one of these days is gonna be negative five or it's gonna be just five degrees. It's still cold enough to kill the plant. So one of the, the methods that we can be use, using one technique is watering the plant before the frost. So I know the, the lowest temperature is gonna be at night. So tonight is gonna be too cold. So I can protect my plant, put in a fabric or the bell, the, something protecting even if it's plastic or glass and also watering in the morning so that is going to protect a little bit the plant and the water is not going to stay uh, in the surface of the plant even in the growing season that never happens so don't worry about like it's going to freeze the plant so the opposite when we know that a frost is coming this is a way that you can be protecting the plant like a natural barrier um, so the plant is not getting the water inside of the plant is not freezing <laughs> and uh, always do it in the morning so in in that case the soil has uh, the soil have some time to absorb the water because also there is a side effect if you if we do it at night for example because it's not enough time for the soil to absorb the water and if that water is freezing so that start um, creating some damage in the soil so we don't want that near right so that's a way to protect our plant do it early and not over watering just enough to water the plant uh, because of course everything there's a lot of snow outside or it's just cold so uh, the water is not uh, trans um, evaporating that fast any the the soil doesn't need a lot of water so just not too much not too little just enough um so now we start talking about is Especially in Allegheny County, the ones that is they are special for the winter uh, season, the winter uh, months. So we have about 
uh, bigger ones, uh, evergreens, uh, trees and shrubs. So we have seen these ones around and we know that they survive and they do really well all year round. It doesn't matter how cold it gets. Uh, that is like the spruce, uh, pine, different pines, and uh, the fir trees. So like these cute little bushes that the shrubs and bushes that we can see um, around. So yeah, they can survive and they don't need like a fabric or something to protect them unless it's like really, really cold. But like I mentioned before, these ones here in Allegheny uh, County, they are going to do well. Um, some blooming perennials, because it's nice when we have flowers, like actually something blooming even in the middle of the winter. So we have um, the hilly borers like Lenten rose. So if you know in any of these two names, uh, the ac winter aconite and the snowdrops. These are beautiful ones. The white ones, they are, they grow very, um, they don't grow too tall. So just, uh, it's nice to see around the, um, uh, in the soil, in the field. And <laughs> That the, So this is something nice that we can have some green plants growing around, but also some some nice flowers, so the, a different color growing. Uh, the winter uh, berries, the winter berry holly, that's another option. So of course we know that it's going to survive and no problem about this one. But what about uh, vegetables? So if we want to grow something to uh, produce, to, to eat, before uh, mentioning these ones, so of course it's not the same, right? Because for example, for lettuce, it's going to grow uh, and do really well between 55 degrees Fahrenheit to 66 Fahrenheit uh, degrees Fahrenheit. But still we can grow the lettuce outside we, if we use a protection, like covering with the plastic, with tunnels, or with uh, a yeah, cold frame. Uh, yeah, they keep growing but just slowly. So yeah, we can keep growing things during the winter, but we understand that it's not that fast. So it's nice to see something alive and growing and we can spend some time during the winter uh, taking care of our plants, but just a little patient, patience because they grow slow. And what can be growing slow? So like the kale, uh, Brussels sprouts, uh, carrots, Something nice about carrots, and this is a tip, I don't know if you knew about that one, is that you can start growing, the, uh, for example, uh, carrots, parsnip, parsnip uh, beets, this, and root, like the root vegetable, <clears throat> start at the end of the, the summer. So, because usually it's between 70 days, for example, for beets, and 100 days for carrots. So, uh, to your uh, your timing so you can start exactly match the timing for the harvest end so you're not going to harvest um when at the beginning of the winter so when it's just like now uh, now uh, sorry i'm still thinking like it's december uh, like november december uh, you allow this cold period of time uh, and you leave the the carrots and the beets uh, these roots in there because when it's getting cold too cold so yeah they 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 don't like that too much so all the nutrients uh, normally the nutrients and the uh, sugars and everything uh, the water these nutrients they are going uh, um, be, being dist distributed equally in the plant so when the cold time uh, arrives so allow for example uh, be harvesting in november at the end of november starting december so the beets or the carrots the turnip is going to be sweeter than harvesting in the in the season during the summer or at the end of the summer it's going to be uh, sweeter so because all those nutrients and sugars just go and they start store it like a storage from these nutrients so all that is in the root it's going to be sweeter so that's nice for us, right? And with some protection, uh, we can also grow the lettuce and the cabbage. If you just want to do it indoors with, for example, lettuce, the small ones, of course, uh, like urugula, that's an example. You can grow close to the window. And no worries about if the window is too cold because the plant is uh, 
they can survive that really low temperatures. Also, we have uh, some ornamental grass. So, yeah, that's something. It's not that new for us, right? And the dogwood, it's nice to have like that red color around. Even sometimes, uh, well, it depends. Some people don't like that because it looks like in between a plant that is like dying, but at the same time you see the color around. Uh, so it's if you like it, that's an option for your garden. And some herbs that we can be growing. So I mentioned about the sage, right? Sage is great. It, it's going to survive. It's, if it's above 15 degrees Fahrenheit, it's going to be fine. It's going to grow and survive. Same with the uh, rosemary and thyme. If the temperature is too cold, highly recommended to water the plant in the morning and to protect the plant. If you can, if it's just a pot, you can bring the pot inside. Uh, but well, sometimes taking care of that. If we are moving the plants indoors and outdoors, that can be uh, even worse for the plant because of the different uh, temperatures. <laughs> so it's not that hard and something nice about growing some herbs during the winter is that there are not a lot of insects around, that it's a challenge during the regular growing season because we have insects, we have a lot of animals around that they also want to eat our plants. So during this is season, we don't have a lot of them. So that's something that's a, that's positive. That's something nice. Uh, so you don't need to be like spraying a lot or checking too much in the plants, what is going around. Uh, just the temperatures, they do that for us. Just check the, the moisture levels, even when we have a lot of snow and precipitation. So it's nice to know. So here you can see that, uh, the moisture matter. So these ones, they are cheap ones. They are not expensive and you just place close to the plants around if it's a small garden or you can buy a couple of these ones. And you can see when the, the soil is moist, when it's dry or when it's like the opposite, it's just too, too much, it's too wet. And that is a, ni a nice, nice way to, to know. Or, just with the time you get better and you can easily uh, just by eye or touching a little bit the soil, you know, if it's dry or it's, um, if it needs some water or not. Uh, also inspect the plants. So yeah, not a lot of insects, but sometimes if there is something alive, they can be around. So few of them, uh, that's not gonna be a, a real problem, but just in case check if there are some insects around. And just in case that you find some insects, for example, aphids, some little uh, little bugs that they can be around, uh, it's not worth it to be spraying something chemical just with a neem oil or agricultural oil or insecticidal soap. That's going to be enough. That's going to be good enough. And... The snow, if it's heavy snow on top of the plant, that's not going to be nice for the plant. It's not, it's not healthy because still when we don't have a lot of sunlight, still the plant needs some uh, light. They need that photosynthesis. Uh, it's essential for the plant. So uh, just gently remove the snow carefully. If it's the, even like ice on top of the plant, you can water the plant and just remove that ice or snow. Um, well, for example, it depends the plant, of course, if it's thick, thicker leaves, like for example, the sage. So that's not a huge problem. So the plant is go even with the snow on top. Yeah, it's not going to die immediately. But if you can remove the snow, that's going to be better. Uh, keep an eye on the temperature so you can, uh, like I say, if you know your microclimate, if you have a microclimate, uh, you can, you know when to go out and protect the plants and put a fabric or put something like a windbreak to protect your plants or when to go in water. So that's when we know our temperature. And uh, about fertilizer, unless the plant looks something like this, that they each show in, uh, some of these deficiencies, um, for example, the deficiency with uh, potassium, you see the, the leaves turning like this, like white, uh, yellow, but the nerves of the, the leaf, it is still very green. 
just an example. So if you see some deficiencies, you can apply some fertilizer, liquid ones, because the, the pellets, the little balls that you can see are sometimes even if you can spray that around, but that's not going to be available for the plant to absorb. So just the ones that they are liquid and you mix just with water and water the plants. But in general, they don't need fertilizer. They grow very slow during this, the cold season. So they don't really know a, a fertilizer. They don't really need this during the winter. <laughs> now, also to protect your, your garden, your winter garden. So if you have some sensitive plants, uh, again, that example that I have hardy plants, uh, the ones that I showed you, but it's gonna be, the temperature is gonna be lower than the minimum temperature for this plant. Uh, you can put some blankets, light ones and not dark blankets. So like white or just creamy color, uh, something breathe that breathable, not too thick. You can place that one around the plants just for that night or for that frost or for that storm and then remove that again. Um, like I mentioned before, water the plants before uh, the frost and using the neem oil in case, uh, neem oil or something organic in case of, of pest. Uh, if, I, if there is some disease that probably you're not going to have any disease neither because of course the fungi bacteria they also need some uh, higher temperatures to be growing in the plant so still something that you're not going to suffer a lot um, for diseases um, during the during the winter and to protect the plant i also mentioned about uh, the mulch what mulch can you use so organic ones always go for organic options because we can find also some mulching or some protection that is plastic or some inorganic materials. They are not recommended even when they can keep a little bit the temperature. It's just not worthy. Um, with the organic ones, uh, just the leaves, just leaves and hay or some organic material, you can use about three to four inches of that mulching, so that's enough. It's like a natural blanket for the soil and for the plants. And that helps to protect the plant from the from drying out, from the desiccation. And of course, because there is not a lot of uh, vegetation and not a lot of uh, weeds and plants around. So deer, rabbits, and some animals, they all, they want to go and, and get your lettuce, get your sprouts, get your cabbage, yeah, and get your plants. So because of this, uh, for the bigger animals, insects, not much, but for the bigger animals, uh, protect your plants. So if you have uh, like fencing or just the fact about the tunnels or any protection for that you can use and that is in your budget to protect your plants. Um, I mentioned the wind break, wind breaks too, if needed. If you know, for example, the the house on top of the hill, a lot of wind definitely needs um, protection for the wind. So any wind breaks that you can install in your garden, and if you have the garden close to the main entry, for example, and you constantly apply um, any salt, the de-icing salt, so that's not nice because that's gonna increase the pH too much. Uh, close to the the if it's close to the garden so if it's close to the garden i'm not telling you stop uh, using the the ice and salt just that with a hose or something you can be wa washing that salt from the garden so that's that's fine if it, it's just about the plants not getting any salt because they are going to suffer with high levels of salt and some tips that you can be uh, using uh, well, before this one, so I'm going to read some questions in the in the chat. Oh, yeah, in the chat first, and we go now with the with the tips, right? So, <clears throat> can you recommend a few name brands or smaller greenhouse similar to the image on one of your slides, or my favorite ones? Yeah, well, that's 
one of the questions that it's um I, I want to answer exactly but uh, something with the cooperative extensions with just educational institutions is that we cannot recommend any brand or some specific uh, companies or private brands uh, so what i can tell about this one is online so like there is there are stores and there is one principal one that we buy online you can find uh, you look for the type you type for small greenhouse and there of course it's going to be like the fancy options first but you can find some nice um, small greenhouses that they are plastic usually the color is green and you um, just do it do it yourself you put everything together is and even when they it's a little cheap the material but they work and they they work so it's about your space if you want to be to if you want it vertical and you put it uh, close to the wall your house just it's another way to protect from the wind uh, that's an option or getting something more vertical that you can just install on top of your plants so yeah unfortunately i cannot tell you exactly what is my favorite one uh, about brands a specific brand about <laughs> okay how deep should be a uh, rice beds for planting so if you have a rice bed like it's way above the soil in that case it's when i uh, is when i mentioned that it's nice because when the spring comes that warm up quickly but also it's, it's exposed to the freezing temperatures so in that case <clears throat> or if it's just a, a rice bed but lower in that case um just there like in the in the normal season like you don't need to adapt or do it too deep uh more than the the deep like how deep to be uh, setting your rice beds is about protecting the bed so especially wind so if you can protect that one and put like a cloth or something on top to protect from the snow uh, if it's gonna be like heavy snow uh, falling on that one uh, this material um, polypropylene i'm forgetting um, polystyrene pol polyesterene uh, that sometimes in the uh, you can get in the store i know it's not very eco-friendly but i'm not recommending just living there in the garden uh, just for the cold season uh, thick pieces of of the um, polystyrene you can put around the rice beds and that helps to protect first and keep a little bit the temperature in there because that isolates uh, isolates the temperature that's a nice one and uh, when it's going to be like too cold and then remove them again because in the same way that it protects and keep the temperature in there it also can keep the cold temperature in there uh, in what it's in there so just to protect uh, the plants for one night or two nights when it's going to be too cold it's more about not how high or low is the rice bed it's about protecting the rice bed <laughs> another one can you leave moisture matters in the ground year round the battery dies that's one of the challenges that uh, like the one that i show you that's working uh, but yeah the batteries they can die and the material is not because it's not that expensive of course these are these ones the ones that i show uh, they are just cheap options uh, they work but we need to take care just be moving them around because yeah if you leave them all year round uh, yeah the battery dies and the components you know, the plastic that the, is mostly like the plastic the cover uh, that suffers and uh, then it's broken if you have uh, if you can do it something like a little more fancy and expensive ones probably they are well always that's something with the company that you can read the instructions if it's a uh, frost tolerant if you can leave those ones all year round or not yeah okay 
uh, if you have more questions, feel free to do it in the chat. And in a couple minutes, we're almost done. Uh, you can unmute the microphone and also ask if you if you want just um, instead of typing in the chat. So just the final uh, tips to be growing in the cold season. Uh, if you want to be harvesting, for example, I mentioned the beets and the carrots and all these root vegetables. Um, it's different harvesting during the the warm season than the cold season because we can have frozen soil, right? So uh, this why so for uh, harvest crops when they are fully fully mature uh, before the frost um, comes. So yeah, that's why because once it's frozen, uh, it's hard. It's not just like pulling the plant because that we can easily break the plant and the root is still in there. So you can, uh, with the forecast and if the plant, the seed packets say, or the seedling, you can see the time to harvest is a hundred days. So you start planting it at the end of August, September. So it matches with the, with to be harvesting during the winter. So it's gonna be sweeter that, that carrot that, or those beets, uh, that turnip. Uh, too much about the harvesting, so take care. It's not just like pulling the plant and that's it. <clears throat> for lettuce, for cabbage, arugula, lettuce, uh, start taking the, the leaves, the outer leaves, not just the one in the middle, because the, the ones in the middle, they need to keep growing and keep the nutrients in there. And the, the outer leaves, they are older ones, so they are not required. They don't require a lot of nutrients. So you can be harvesting this one if you want, if you want to keep growing and not just remove the full, uh, the whole plant, uh, you can do that. <laughs> and you can start harvesting when, for example, some days, even during the winter, some days uh, you can see that the snow is melting, uh, sunlight uh, early in the morning, like, that uh, period of time you can be harvesting uh, if it's frozen for example the root vegetables and if frozen the soil you try try to use uh, any tool uh, to be like going around digging uh, digging and taking that root out because sometimes it's not that easy just to pull the the plant and next one okay uh, you can like I mentioned before, use some cover, some protection. Mulching is an option, but if you don't have the leaves or um, any mulch available, you can use uh, plastic or some cloths around uh, around the plant to protect. And if it's a frost, so you can use the, the blankets, like I mentioned before, you can uh, put around the plant and protect the plant for that night or th that period of two and two days that is going to be like too too cold and watering uh, in the morning about the mulch yeah that's a tip that i mentioned uh, before uh, the cold frames and on heated greenhouses that's also a nice option and that extend the growing season a little bit more and uh, also protects the plant from the heavy snow uh, you can be, well, I already mentioned about the timing to be harvesting if you just want to pick everything. So uh, uh, setting the timing for harvesting, um, harvesting in the morning and uh, about the handle the crops gently because yeah, they are, it's not the best time for them to be growing. So yeah, they still keep growing, but we need to just take a little bit of, care and be gentle with the plants and use the tools if you need to be pruning for example like this i mentioned before they are not going to be growing a lot but if you need like to cut a little part that you see that it's not doing well so yeah with a knife not just pulling the the stem or the branch because that can hurt the the plant also you can be a uh, harvesting a uh, harvesting or pruning uh, your trees like the big fruit trees or pie, uh, different trees that you have this is the best time to be um, cutting some branches because we don't have a lot of insects so of course it's not um, we don't 
even when the wound is open, there is not a lot of fungi and diseases going in there and affecting the plant. So right now is the best time to be doing uh, this. And I know there are more questions at some point, like what if I select this plant or I have like, okay, once you start doing it, uh, many questions comes to mind. And sometimes we find a lot of information in the internet, but some of these information sometimes hurt and damage more the plants than actually helping the plants. Or when you feel like that, that uh, there are some questions or doubts about, uh, just go with the Master Gardener Group, your local cooperative extension office. You can send us an email or calling and connecting with different, sharing your experience and your knowledge with your neighbor, with someone else. Uh, yesterday I heard uh, a conversation with gardeners about like there are some people that they are really good doing something just because they have the experience and they have they know some tips and tricks to be doing in the garden but they don't share that one and when it's commercially and you're selling of course I understand why that happened but if it's a local uh, food gardening you don't need to be like in that competition and you can create community and together be, be in gardening and growing things together. So that's nice. And that's why we are doing this, right? That's why also our group of master gardeners, they volunteer to their time to teach and to be there for the community, helping to create a green and bountiful and beautiful gardens around even in the cold season, during the cold season. So it's nice to share your experience. And so now, well, we have two minutes left. So if you have a question right now, feel free to unmute your microphone. I don't see more questions in the chat. Uh, if you have some question right now, so feel free to ask. And if not, uh, I appreciate your, your time and I hope this can be uh, useful for you. And this is why we are always all year round helping. And anytime, send, send an email, ask. Uh, this is my email, you can see it right here or you go just to the Allegheny County Cooperative Extension uh, website and we are always here to help. That's about if we test soil, yeah, we can receive the, we can get, we can get and receive the soil samples and we send to the laboratory. Uh, so right now for, for this extension office with the current fees, uh, we have only pH testing and it's like two or $3 per sample. Um, and during the fall, uh, the Master Gardener group, they run the pH soil um, test for free. So just stay tuned because we always post the dates for that, for those, um, for that, that time, those dates, usually is in, in the fall. And if you want full analysis for the soil, so you can contact, if, like in this, um, you can send me an email or call and I can share the, like how you can be taking your samples. And then when you have your samples, you bring those samples to the, um, to the office and we send that to the laboratory. That fee right now is like $20 and it's full, full analysis, like what nutrients, organic matter and recommendations from the laborator laboratory. Uh, you need to, uh, to do that between every, it depends if you have uh, your garden in every year, so it can be every year or every two years be testing your soil. And a copy of the presentation, no, this recording is going to be available in our uh, YouTube channel. So CC Allegheny. Um, I'm going to show you quickly. This is our YouTube channel for horticulture. So uh, the horticulture CCE 
let me see. Yeah, you can see this right now. Uh, here in videos, you can see the recording of these sessions and not only this one, you can see multiple ones here. And this is where you can see this presentation again. If you need like a specific data or so information from, from this presentation, uh, again, you can send an email and we are happy to help like to, for example, about the plans and the, uh, like these ones, for example, hardiness zone and the plans for Allegheny County. So yeah, uh, you can find the recording or this information, we are happy to to uh, send that to you if, uh, at any time. Okay, so that's that's it for today. Thank you for being here. Have a wonderful weekend. Uh, stay warm and I'll see you in the next class.